it's just a natural progression. If you feel good, you feel good in all facets of your life. If you have harmony between personal life and, and business, then the transactions are going to happen. I'm Maud Leger, and this is the Realtors Conspiracy Podcast, where we crack the code to real estate success. Learn from top realtors, entrepreneurs, and innovators about how to grow your business as we discuss real estate success stories, mindset, processes, motivations, and the key to their success. Check out our podcast episode every Monday to crack the code to success for your real estate business. This week, I'm speaking with Kate Brodick from the Kate Brodick team. Kate supports that her key to success is her drive and energy. I was excited to hear how she grew her business from nothing while moving to a brand new area with no spheres of influence. She now mentors her team to grow individually, time blocks with a focus on lead generating activities in order to close more deals. Kate shares some specific actions to do on a day-to-day as a realtor to succeed. So let's get to my chat with Kate. Hi, Kate. Thank you very much for joining us on the episode today. Tell us what is the key to your success? Well, thank you for having me. Um, I always love to get to know new people and meet new people in our industry. And um, I would have to say it's really hard to pinpoint one specific, uh, I guess, reason why my success has um, unfolded the way that it has. But I'm going to say that it's drive. You can't stop someone who doesn't want to be stopped. Right. So, um, you, there's lots of different things in any business that makes you a compounding amount of success, but I think that you really need to have the tenacity and the drive Mm -hmm. to want to better yourself every day, um, and to learn from your mistakes and to apply the knowledge you learn in order to be successful. I love it. How does that drive show up in your day to day or in your life or in your business? You know what? Like it's, my team would a hundred percent say this. They've often lifted up the back of my shirt to see if I have batteries. <laughs> just I, don't I just don't stop. And it's, I have, I'm a very high energy person. Um, I'm a go, 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 go person. I'm very task oriented. So I, I, I don't like a lot of downtime per se. Yeah. Um, So it's, it's just, it's applied to everything, you know, I mean, it's a multifaceted business. I mean, obviously the clients and the relationships are first and foremost, always one, but a lot of people actually, I I just came back from the Kathleen Black conference last week and she said it perfectly. People think they are working a job when really you're running a business. Yeah, definitely. Big difference. Right. And that really resonated with me because when you're an entrepreneur, there is not one area you're you're an accountant you're an administrator you know you're a team lead you're um hr like you're all and so (laughs) you apply yourself to all of these or at least have the right people around you and that is also probably one of my biggest keys to success yeah the right people around you so tell us about that what kind of attributes are you looking for in a team member well i think that um if I can go to the uh, support staff, because to be honest, they're the ones that drive your business. So yeah. I've always been a believer that you should not be the smartest person in the room. And if you are, you're in the wrong room. <laughs> and very early on from my career, I surrounded myself with support staff that were exceptional in their department. Nice. So from hiring um, our director of operations, who is Allison, who runs basically oversees the business. Um, and then I've got uh, my director of communications, which is Carolyn, who oversees all the back end stuff like con- con- contact management, making sure that our public relations and human resources department is like totally full and, and executed properly, marketing and social media, website. Like, I don't do that stuff. I mean, sure, I help, had a hand in developing those pathways, but they are the geniuses in those departments. And that's why they run so well. I love it. That's very cool. How do you keep your, your uh, team accountable to make sure everything runs smoothly? Like you say, well, I mean, we, um, I'm a very systematic person, so I love checklists. 
I love um, like binders with manuals and how are we going to do this? And oh, I, I haven't done that in a while. Where do I go to look? So right from the get go, um, I was very fortunate to have the support to organize our systems for each part of the back end of our, our business. Mm -hmm. And so that was one of the things that we have um, had in place for a long time. And we've obviously over the years, you know, looked back at it and said, what was working, what wasn't working, what can we be more efficient at? Um, but to have um, all of your systems in place in like a manual style um, so people can refer back to it is probably was one of the best things I ever did right from the get-go. Nice. Um, because if you can't, if you don't have any processes in place from start to finish in your daily routine, then it's really hard to know what's working, what's not working, what was checked off, what wasn't checked off. And I would say that that was probably one of the best things that we could have done. And, and that's definitely having those systems in place. Nice. Very cool. Yeah. Um, what would you say, how can other realtors stay on top of their game other than like if they don't have the drive that you have, like systems and procedures? Yeah. And that's a hard thing, right? Because I guess it all depends on personality, but uh, we have um, really always implemented team meetings, one-on-one -on -one coaching. Uh, we've really honed in on it this year, especially because of the pandemic, not being able to be face-to-face -face as much, making sure that people were feeling okay, not just looking okay, because it's been <laughs> hard, right? Yeah, so, definitely. Um, and that's something that we're really stepping up our game into 2022 is um, making sure that each individual agent is not just sales driven, but personal growth and development driven, because if you're not okay on the inside, it's going to translate to your business. Mm -hmm. So making sure that barriers in the household, making sure that, you know, the educational por portion is still being touched on, making sure that people have goals and they're being accountable to them and making sure there's no roadblocks in our agents day-to-day -day routines that sets them back 10 feet when all it really was, was it maybe just needed some communication and, and a few conversations to get them back on track. Yeah, I love it. That's so cool. Yeah. <laughs> what do you I have? Also <laughs> yeah. love no. it. You look great. <laughs> what do you have for uh, goals for 2022? Where's your vision and where, where are you going? You know what? I, I would say that the goals are, this is going to sound funny, but our goals are actually a lot more centered around personal growth and development. Nice. And I think if I could take anything out of the last two years is people suffered. Yeah. And they suffered trying to navigate having kids at home all the time. Maybe they lost their job. You know, mental health was obviously on the rise. And so when myself and my management staff got together and set out, we actually just finished all of our, our agent goal meetings last week. Mm -hmm. um, we really focused on personal growth and development and well-being because if all of that falls into place, the transactions are going to be a byproduct of it. Yeah. Yeah. If you're growing, innovating, your business will grow, right? It's just a natural progression. If you feel good, you feel good in all facets of your life. If you have harmony between personal life and, and business, then the transactions are going to happen. Yeah, true. <laughs> Very cool. And what was the defining moment for you? If we go back, when do you act, when did you actually feel successful as an, as an agent? I think I felt successful when I hit a certain uh, volume of transactions and that was a hundred. And that was probably about five years ago. I was licensed for, sorry, that's not true. It was, it was six years ago. I was licensed for four years. Okay. Um, I had a very swift career, one that is probably still has people shaking their heads. I, I, I came new to Brantford. Um, after three years, I was the number one realtor, both transactions and volumes from a city I, I never grew up in. Wow. Um, which was a pinnacle moment for me. But I think the biggest one was when I hit that hundred transactions and I was like, whoa, <laughs> this is nuts. And then I doubled it the next year. Nice. Congrats. That's amazing. Yeah. So you said yeah. you moved to Brentford and you're like grew your business in there. What actions did you do to make sure you were getting the numbers and growing? <laughs> You know what? It's 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 weird because I I don't think I had a traditional path, and I I wish I could say that I had some kind of secret sauce. Maybe it was a bit of luck with a little bit of tenacity mixed in together. Did you drive? <laughs> um, but I didn't know anybody from the city except for my broker of record and one other person. So it's not like I had a large sphere of influence. Mm -hmm. I just the business plan that I stuck to and I believed in, 
And I never took any relationship for granted. I really worked hard for everybody that came my way. And then I grew a big referral base right off the get-go. And I wasn't afraid to ask for the business either. Nice. That's a good one. That's, That's a really good yeah. one. Two things you said, the taking relationship for granted. I find when somebody has a sphere of influence, become a realtor in the area, they very often take that for granted. So you, you expect people to use you. Yeah. Yeah. That's a really good point. Yeah. So I really was hungry for the business. So mm -hmm. the second somebody came to me, I connected with them on a personal level because I was, I found, found it really easy to connect with people and build relationships. So, um, and I tell my agents this all the time, when you meet people, don't make a client, make a friend, mm -hmm. you know, have them trust you the same way that you would trust a sister, a brother, a friend, a colleague. And, and then the relationship is going to happen and then they're going to feel more comfortable with you. So we always say, make a friend, not a client. Very cool. I like that. That's a good Thank you remember. <laughs> yeah. um, how can realtors leverage their listings to get the next listing? Okay, so that's a big one. So I, I and once again, listings came very naturally to me right from the beginning. Yeah. And you have to have a process in place from the moment that house sells, you, to, you have to farm that area. Everybody needs to know they don't, you don't want people driving towards that sale signs. You want boosted social media posts and advertising on Google. You want to do mailer flyouts, making sure that that local area understands that you sold that, that property and for how much value. A lot of people, I don't personally do it and I've never done it, but a lot of people will door knock the area and hand out postcards. Yeah. I chose a different route and did door knockers because don't ask me why I don't like going up to people's doors. Cause I don't think I like it being done to me. Okay. <laughs> right. So I just, I did my own spin on that. So I yeah. made sure that the neighbors knew that the house was sold. And if they had any questions about it, that they definitely would come to me. And then I would keep those um, flyers and door knockers circulating. The, they say that when you market, someone needs to see you seven times before yeah. it registers in their mind. Yeah, very true. So having the door knock, like I think a lot of people don't like to go to the door to door knock, but just dropping it off is good doing like yeah. as, much, as long as you're out there something that you're comfortable yeah. with that's right and then if you pair that with you know uh social media sponsored ads mm -hmm. um plus if you can do anything on google or youtube or even just like your stories on facebook and instagram it's a combination of utilizing all of those platforms in order to make sure that people see your face even though it was just one sale they could see that in seven different areas yeah yeah it's perfect what motivates, motivates you? What gets you so driven and so excited about real estate every day? I, 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 once again, I even wish I had that answer. I, I didn't grow up wanting to be a realtor. Um, it fell in my lap and I'm a hunt. I'm one of those people that sets a goal and I hunt for it. And I, I, I'm very competitive, <laughs> almost to a fault. So it's, it's like the chase for me. It's, it's setting that goal and having a plan to get to that goal. And then once you achieve it, setting something a little bit further ahead. So it's, it's a hard thing to say. I feel like, you know, some people, when you're like that, they were an all-star basketball player, how did they fall into that? That they, they knew that talent was there. I feel like I fell into real estate and it just really jived with my personality. Very cool. What was your background before? Do you want to share a little bit about that? Yeah, um, dental hygienist. Totally opposite. People yeah. person though. So the people person, the relationship is there. The caring is there. Yeah. And, and I think the, the fun thing about that was, is I really had to coax people to want to come to me. They had to trust me. Nobody likes to go to the dentist. True. Um, so I really had to build that initial trust right from the get go. And I, I, I mean, I miss my patients because I would see their parents and then the children and then the grandparents. And it became a network for me that was uh, really comfortable. And building that trust with them was a really big thing that I took from that. And then prior to that, I was a server. I was actually a bartender and a server at the keg for many years while I was in school. Okay. And um, once again, going up to random tables and connecting with them and, and just, just honestly, just really enjoying people. Nice. Yeah. It's a perfect way That's to put it. Good. Yeah. <laughs> and so now what's your day to day in real estate? Now that you have a team and you've grown, like what is your, your skill set that you're owning on every day? Well, uh, that's actually a really good question because we're, we're trying to reset, um, myself. Um, I, I've always, I've been very heavily in the business for the last 10 years and not that I do, I want to step away. I definitely don't, but I now want to grow myself into 
to other areas that are very fulfilling to me, which is like sitting here with you and doing oh, the podcast, nice. being on the, being at the Buzz conference on a panel for social media, you know, being a content creator, like doing other things so that I can bring the business in and I can um, allow my agents to really grow and flourish. Yeah. And I can be more of that CEO mindset and help the business grow to another level because I don't want to just, I don't want to just keep building my own transactions. I've done that. I'm, I'm happy. I want to grow my team now. Yeah. Have everybody from your team grow as much as you did. Exactly. That's and that's exactly what, and that takes time, right? Yeah. That's a good vision. That's a good plan. Yeah. <laughs> what yeah. are three actions every realtor should be doing every day? Every day. Well, I mean, number one, lead generation. Yes. Who are you touching today? Who are your contact points? Where are you meeting new people? Where are you getting them from? Every person should be making an attempt to talk to at least 15 to 20 new people a day. And it doesn't have to be real estate related. It's about building those relationships Ooh. without a doubt. One of my agents, Rebecca Johnson calls it the power hour. And okay. I love that term. It's so fantastic. And it's, it's how many people can you reach in your sphere or just outside your sphere? Because lead generation is the one thing that people fall out on. They're so worried about being on social media or they're, they're, they're not getting the leads. Yeah. Yeah. I love their power hour, power hour. Thing. Yeah, yeah. She's been, uh, she's been talking about that since, you know, she's been on my team now for almost six years and she really, really uh, puts herself into that power hour of, I have one hour to make as friend, many friends as possible. Where am I getting them? Yeah. So, so that's I my next question for you. Cause you said you are not from the area. If you are looking to find people to talk to, where do you look for? If you don't know anyone, you've got to really have, so we have a really great um, sphere of influence sheet that helps to our agents brainstorm different touch points in the community. So, I mean, when I first moved here, I didn't have kids. So it's not like I could be on PTA meetings or, you know, connections in the school or, yeah. you know, and if you're a realtor, you, you, you don't really have colleagues because they're your competition. They're your competition. <laughs> yeah. That's right. I mean, you have friendly colleagues, but you have to start to think, where do I talk to people, grocery store, coffee shops, you know, out shopping, um, your neighbors, yeah. mail out billboards like what are you doing to generate those relationships now open houses was a really big one before the pandemic yeah um, but then we had some really rock star agents in Brantford start doing virtual open houses so they they pivoted mm -hmm. really sharp actually and they started doing these live um Facebook and Instagram open houses to get people to ask questions about the property and you know what that to me was a that was a strong pivot in a market where you couldn't be face to face. Mm -hmm. Would you integrate that into your business ongoing, even if open houses come back or would you stick to real in-person open houses later? I think it's really about the, com how comfortable people are in their business. Yeah. Um, we were really safe, but we, we never took away the face to face. We were just obviously very safe with people, made sure that, um, you know, people were qualified and, and, and not, um, you know, just out, Sunday driving, browsing, yeah. um, and obviously following COVID protocol. Um, but I'm, I'm a big believer that there's so much that you connect with on a person on a, on a one-on-one -on -one in-person basis yeah. versus over, you know, zoom or teams or whatever technology you're implementing. It's, it's the tone and it's the emotion that you miss. Right. I totally get that. Yeah. Body language, And I'm a, I'm a hand talker and <laughs> So just be in front of each other and actually talking right. yeah. the energy from each other too. Right. I mean, it's just, it's, it is a thing, but uh, you know, I think that it allowed us to adapt quickly yeah. And, yeah. and implement technology that we may not have been able to do. Mm -hmm. um, I think there was a lot of good that came out of it that if we were ever to be faced in a situation again, we could pivot again quite quickly and, and make sure that our businesses molded to whatever it was that we were going through. Mm -hmm. um, I'm a big in person. That's it. That's it. That's simple. That's good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What? Uh, so we talk about three actions some, somebody should do every day. We said lead generating. What would be two yes. more? Uh, definitely time blocking and batch content. So yes. <laughs> time blocking for me is um, actually um, my uh, um, office manager. I call she's our, our director of operations, Allison. She's a big one for time blocking. And I actually really, I think it's brilliant. 
um, setting aside uh, time in your schedule to do specific tasks so that you stay on task yeah. and you're not squirrely like, oh my God, now I'm checking social media. Now I'm checking my emails. Now I'm doing this, right? It, it really keeps you organized. And when you time block in your calendar, you can really set aside the time of things that are priority mm -hmm. and then work your way up and then batch content. I mean, we all know that social media is just, it, it can be <laughs> a black hole oh, yeah. or it could be super <laughs> that's right it, it, it can be it's a, we call it the vortex right yeah. because i mean you get on there and you've got your dms going and you've got your you know your content but it, i'm a big believer in batch contenting and only going in and checking you know your messages at certain once again following that time blocking scheme yes um, but as a business if you're not on social media marketing yourself then how do people trust you to market their properties mm -hmm. so I do set specific times in my calendar to batch content. So then that way I have content for up to a month or more. And I'm able to then schedule it to make sure that I'm covering a variety of topics and different avenues for content, whether it be videos, reels, static posts, carousels, informative, educational, a little bit of entertainment. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you to plan, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's everything. It can't be just one thing because people will get bored of that. So, yeah. And I mean, I, I, I do understand there's an element of, of being afraid to put yourself out there. Mm -hmm. And I've come to realize that nobody else can provide the information the way that you deliver it. And if it turns some people off, that's okay. They're not your client, but if it allows you to connect with those who have a similar value or maybe way of learning as you, then those are really your people. That's your niche market. Yeah. Very true. That's perfect. <laughs> yeah. Um, what would be the best advice you've ever received in your career? Wow. That's uh, actually, we just, uh, we just covered this on a video um, in our team and I'm going to, I'm going to share the same thing that I, I will have put out in a couple weeks that you don't make life altering or big decisions when you're too happy and you don't divulge too much information when you're too sad and when you're, you should really be providing information about yourself or your business when you're at a very neutral kind of Switzerland uh, feel, right? Okay. Um, because any long-term um, decisions that you make should be at a um, at a very stable state. Yeah. And especially in business, because it's easy to have those highs and lows, right? Yeah. Um, it's easy to get really excited on your business. And then it's re really easy to get brought down, um, it, probably within minutes of each other. So um, make those big decisions when you're at a, a state of just, you know, calm yeah. and authentic yourself. Yeah, Switzerland, like neutral. Switzerland. Yeah. yeah, that's great. And when you're going big, you're Texas. When you're super neutral, you're Switzerland. <laughs> <laughs> Very cool. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thanks for sharing all of that. So many tips. So much yeah. help. So, so helpful for all realtors around. I love it. Yeah, you're welcome. I appreciate you uh, having me with you. Thanks for joining. Subscribe to our podcast, Realtors Conspiracy, today. Mm -hmm.